OK, Sinead, the lobby's in now. Oh, great. OK, so we have some folks joining us now. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We're going to get started in a few minutes, but before we do, just to let you know that if you have um, any questions that you'd like to ask us, feel free to pop them in the chat because um, we are going to do a little presentation, but we will be keeping an eye on the chat throughout the whole uh, spotlight session. So feel free to put your questions in now and as, as we go along and then we'll answer them at the end. So I think we have a few people still flying in there, which is great to see. And hopefully we'll have lots of questions in the chat. And then we can have a great panel discussion and Q&A afterwards. Now I'm going to um, start sharing my slides, so I'm ready to go in a wee minute. Um, okay. And actually, just before I do that, I suppose um, I would like to welcome everybody and thank you all for joining us for this spotlight session on the Bachelor of Science in Applied Psychology at IADT. Um, my name is Sinead Mead and I'm the Programme Chair of Applied Psychology and also I lecture on the programme. Um, joining me this evening are um, Robin McGuire, who is one of our admissions officers, and Robin is also a graduate of the Applied Psychology programme, so she is in the unique position mm -hmm. of having um, the perspective of um, being a graduate on the programme and then the other side from admissions. So she mm -hmm. has a wealth of knowledge to share with you. And we also have two of our fantastic student ambassadors. We have Sophie Catherine and Lauren Tavilli, and they are joining us this evening to um, I suppose, share with you their perspectives of studying the programme and um, they'll be able to answer any questions that you have from the student perspective. And I'll be able to answer um, questions you have as well um, about the programme. So I think we have a really good mix of perspectives to share with you and um, we're looking forward to, to telling you more about the programme. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to uh, do a brief presentation on the programme uh, for you and um, I'm going to show you some slides and um, this will really kind of like outline the structure of the programme, what kind of things you'll be learning about along with entry requirements and so on. Um, while that's happening, again, feel free to pop your questions in the group chat. Um, some of my colleagues on the call will answer them throughout the, the presentation. Some of them will be answered at the end. And um, I'm going to share those slides with you now so we can get started. So. OK. Now, here we go. So again, hello to everyone. Welcome and thanks for joining us. So as I said, I'm specifically here with my colleagues to talk to you about the Bachelor of Science um, Honours in Applied Psychology at IADT. And I suppose many of you are here this evening with us because you are interested in finding out more about um, how psychologists study the mind and mental processes in relation to behaviour. So I would imagine that lots of you are interested in finding out more about things like how do people develop across the lifespan? Um, how does technology influence our behaviour? How can we use psychology to help others? And so on. Now, something I would like you to know that is very important is the difference 
between psychology and applied psychology. So psychology is the study of the mind and um, behavior and applied psychology does that, but it has an additional focus on how to apply what we know from the study of psychology to everyday life. So applied psychology really has an edge on psychology because um, if you do an applied psychology degree, you will um, have an additional focus on applying the knowledge and the skills that you learn in your degree in order to, for example, um, create an intervention that can have a positive impact on people's mental health. You would be able to apply that knowledge to maybe create um, a web app that can help people, um, for example, to remember daily tasks or help them to improve their study skills. Um, and essentially that you can apply psychology to, I suppose, make a con positive contribution to society in the field of psychology, but also beyond that, you'll be able to apply that knowledge and skills in lots of different um, work settings. So I really would like you to know that because uh, we feel that our applied psychology uh, students um, have um, an edge on psychology students when they leave college. They have a lot of um, real world kind of competence and, and skills that employers find very attractive. So why? would you consider studying um, applied psychology at IADT? I suppose that is the next question I would like to answer um, for you. So the first thing I would like to say is that it is a four years full-time degree. It's a level eight Bachelor of Science and it's accredited by the Psychological Society of Ireland. Now, the Psychological Society of Ireland is the professional body representing psychologists in Ireland. And um, when they accredit a degree like ours, they are essentially saying that it is of the highest um, quality. Um, so our degree in applied psychology is of the same uh, quality as other PSI accredited degrees in Ireland, but also um, our PSI degree accredited degree is recognized by the British Psychological Society as well. And that's really important for you to know, because if you want to do further study in the field of psychology after your undergraduate degree, um, typically postgraduate courses will have a PSI or BPS accredited degree as an entry requirement. So it's really important that you know this and that you check that when you're applying for your psychology course. Another reason why you might like to study applied psychology with us is because it's very practical in nature. We um, have a variety of different teaching and learning methods, including lab experiments, um, making web applications, doing seminars and projects and so on. And a lot of the assessment is done via continuous assessment or project work. So while there are some in-class tests and that most of your assessment is done by continuous assessment rather than end of term examinations. Also, our program is consistently uh, praised for using a mix of lectures, tutorials, labs and so on um, as our teaching and learning assessment. It's very student centred. So you'll be in uh, your large class for most of your lectures and then you're split up into smaller groups for tutorials, and labs and so on. So this means that over the course of the degree, you really get to know each other and you also get to know your uh, lecturers very well and that there is a lot of opportunity for one-on-one -on -one support with your lecturer. And also there's a lot of opportunity for peer learning in these small groups and lab sizes. So that's something that um, we find very conducive to creating a good community within the class and with the lecturers and the student body, um, but also for your learning. You, you have far more um, opportunity to speak with us one on one. Um, in terms of your assessments, some of them are done on an individual basis and some of them are done in teams or groups. So there is a mixture. And um, we do put quite a bit of emphasis on group work because we know that these are skills 
that um, employers really value and that that experience stands to students in the future. Um, your lecturers are very accessible. They'll be very helpful to you. They'll all know you by um, second year, <laughs> if not third year. So that's something we're very proud of is that rapport that we have. And we feel that it um, helps develop graduates that are very competent, but also very confident as well. Um, and you will, through studying applied psychology, pick up an awful lot of transversal skills that can be applied um, just in your daily life, but also in applied psychology work settings and lots of other work settings as well. So um, now I'm going to give you a brief outline of the structure of the programme from year one to four. So in first year, you will study a range of modules that really give you um, an introduction to some of the key areas in applied psychology. So, for example, here you can see modules in cyber psychology, personality and individual differences and also research methods and statistics. And actually, research methods and statistics is present um, throughout the four years of the programme because it's the backbone of psychology as a science. And that's why we have um, a maths requirement for entry to the programme. In addition to your applied psychology modules, in first year you will also study some faculty-wide modules, connect uh, skills workshops, and they're really focused on supporting students to develop the kinds of reading and writing and technological skills that um, help them to adjust to college life. So they're really scaffolding your other learning. Um, after first year, you will go on to second year. And in second year, there's a little change in structure of the program. Um, the whole class will be together for what we call the core modules. So they're at the top of the slide there. So for example, um, a core module would be developmental and lifespan psychology. Um, again, we've research methods and statistics, but we also have cognitive psychology. Um, so the whole class is together when you're studying those modules. You will also get a chance to study an elective in a totally different course within the faculty for about three weeks. Um, and there are lots of choices for electives, so you could um, choose to study um, an area like uh, film, script writing. Um, you could end up doing um, fine art and so on. OK, so that's a really um, unique type of elective that reflects the kind of creative um, space that we have in the college. Um, from second year, you need to choose a path for the remainder of your degree. So there are two paths to choose from, the practice path and the tech path. The practice path um, is made up of modules that are more focused on applying psychology in practice. So in second year, that would be, for example, organisational psychology, whereas the tech path is more focused on applying psychology to technology. So, for example, user experience research. Now, your lecturers will help you to make the decision about which path best suits you at the end of first year, start of second year. And once you choose your path, then you remain on that path for second, third and fourth year. So your whole class will be together for core modules and then you will be split up into two smaller groups to do either your practice path modules or your tech path modules. Now, just so you know, um, we have found over the years that Whichever path you choose um, does not limit your options for further study or, or employment. We have had uh, graduates who have studied the tech path go on and become clinical psychologists. And we've also had people who study the practice path go on and work in a more technological focused sector. So um, whichever path you choose, you still end up with your PSI accredited Level 8 Bachelors of Science in Applied Psychology. So on to year three. And again, you will be all together when you're studying your core modules. So for example, biological psychology, clinical psychology, um, neuroscience and society, 
and you'll also um, complete a module in professional practice and placement. So, of course, that's going to be very hands on and a really valuable um, experiential learning experience. Then the class will be split into two smaller groups, depending on the path you choose. So if you chose the practice path, you will study, for example, educational psychology, whereas if you chose the tech path, you'll study um, content management systems, for example. And then on to year four. So year four is the final year of the programme. And again, you will be all together as a class for your core modules. So for example, um, you have advanced research in psychology and psychology of new media and entertainment and transpersonal psychology. And everybody in the class will also complete a major research project or thesis under the supervision of a staff member on the programme. And the major research project is really the capstone of the entire course. It's where the students uh, draw everything that they've learned in terms of knowledge and, and skills on the programme together to um, research a research question um, that is of interest to them over the course of the entire year. So it really is a major um, learning milestone uh, for students on the um, on the degree. And one of the aspects of that that we're very proud of is that we give our students a lot of choice over the topics that they um, can focus on for their major research project, whereas that's not always the case in um, other institutions. Sometimes you can be very much constrained in your choices depending on staff interests and so on. Um, when students complete their major research project uh, after the, the term, the, the second term has ended, there is a graduate show called IADT on show that happens um, on campus, but there is also an online website for it. And our students present their work at that event, which is a really um, valuable opportunity to disseminate their research findings to the public. And also we've had students um, be recruited for jobs at that event in the past as well. So that's really good. Um, then if you chose the practice path in fourth year, you will study forensic psychology. Whereas if you chose the tech path, you will study applied uh, user experience research instead. So that's the um, outline of the structure of the programme. But like I said earlier, um, as you are studying these modules, you, you will be learning using a variety of teaching and learning methods. So you'll have your lectures, but you'll also have labs, you'll have experiments, you'll have seminars, group work, independent work, and so on. Most of the course is um, you know, done by continuous assessment. So you could be doing a project, you could be doing um, a lab report, you could be making a web app, you could be doing your thesis, um, you could be doing an MCQ test in class or something like that. So lots and lots of variety. Now, one of the things we're also very proud of at IADT is that we have um, fantastic uh, teaching and learning support on campus. So um, the student services, uh, for example, help us as a programme and they help the students in their uh, teaching and learning. So um, if you have any additional learning needs um, or even if you know you don't feel you have any additional learning needs, the student services are available to you. So they can provide you with assistive technology, for example, or dyslexia support, but they can also um, provide tips and um, templates for uh, effective uh, study guides and also um, effective study timetable and basically help you to adjust college life and help you to kind of organize yourself in such a way that um, you can do your best in college. Um, so it's great to have that extra support. Also, we have a maths tutor in student services who um, would help some of the applied psychology students with their um, statistics as part of research methods. But I would like to say that while we do statistics in applied psychology. It is statistics for the behavioural sciences. So there is some maths involved in it, 
but it's not like you would be studying the kind of maths that you would be doing in a mathematical degree. And you get lots of one-on-one -on -one support with your lecture. We also have the maths tutor and we often run um, extra student clinics where um, we have some postgrads um, part-time staff that, that further support that process in the labs. So plenty of support. Okay, so I'm sure you're all very interested to know about the entry requirements for the course. So the Leaving Cert points at round one, 418. Um, you need to have as a minimum uh, in terms of subjects, um, two H5 plus four O6 or H7. All right. You need to have um, at least leaving cert pass maths or similar. So, for example, if you are doing um, FETAC or QQI, you would need to have um, the leaving cert pass maths or you would need to have um, the equivalent in a mathematical uh, module. Um, you also need to have an O6 or H7 in English. So we do offer places to mature applicants and students on QQI or FETAC courses, and those applications, um, along with the, the Leaving Search applications, they all come through um, the CAO. Okay. Um, so I'll come back to this a little bit later just to remind you of this information, but um, thank you very much for listening. My name is Sinead Mead. My email address is there if you want to email um, me after the session. And um, I'll come back to this later and, and, and show you the, the, other, the other links that you can check out, because I think now I'm going to stop sharing this so we can get on to the panel discussion and, of course, the questions that you'll have for us. So thank you very much. Hi Sophie. Hi Robin. Can you still hear me? Okay. Yep. Yeah, all good. good. Okay. Good stuff. So, have we many questions coming in the chat? Not yet. So, um, hopefully, okay. we'll get a couple more in. Um, okay. With people, well, we might get the panel discussion going. I I might just throw throw out. Oh, I see a wee question there. Um, do you yeah. want to get that one, Robin? Yep, I can um, answer that. So uh, we can hold up to 10% of places for students coming from uh, PLC, so from level five, level six, so up to 10% and they're offered through a separate round to round one through the Leaving Cert. So you would have your offers in advance of round one. So up to 10%, but obviously you still have to meet the grade requirements or at least the maths requirements. Um, and obviously it all depends on how many people apply, but up to 10%. So depending it can be about five six seven places um for students coming from uh, plcs excellent um there's another question in there we don't do plc courses but careers portal the website if you just google careers portal it's a really really good page or a really good website and if you just look up psychology or applied psychology and you drop down and you say level five or level six it'll give you all of the level five and level six psychology and applied psychology plcs that are available there's a couple of them in dublin and um, i think there's one in black rock um, and it, it doesn't really matter where where you do one really from our perspective from an admissions perspective so you know if, if you're not in dublin and there's one near you you know that that's no different to, to one that's in dublin so take a look at careers portal i'll put a link up to that now in the chat um but that's a really good um website i think i saw something about electives there yes you can take an elective in second year of applied psychology. So when you do that, um, you'll have an opportunity to choose an elective from a range of different electives. So you could end up uh, choosing something like um, screenwriting for film and TV or fine art or Sophie, can you remember what elective you did? Or Lauren, can you remember the elective you did? <laughs> um, I remember I did um, electives in, um, we, we, I, it was different when I did it, so we, we had a, f a few more options and we, we kind of changed around a little bit, but we did acting, I did life drawing, um, there was another one on electronics that I did when I was in second year that was very interesting. Um, I'm not too sure what else, did you do any different, Lauren? 
Yeah, so I actually did the electronics one. It was electronics for res resilient communities. So it was like, you know, wind turbines, solar panels, that kind of thing. They have like photography drawn, as you said. There's a VR one, I think, a little bit like that. Yeah, I suppose the, the, sometimes the elective choices change from time to time, but you'd have a very good range to choose from. It is a really good opportunity for students to get a taste of other um, disciplines within the college, but also I'm always struck by the links that can be made between psychology and those other disciplines. So it really helps students to kind of see how they can apply their knowledge to lots of different um, areas outside of psychology. And it's fun as well, of course, isn't it? To Definitely. study something else for, for a few weeks. It's yeah. a really great way to make friends as well in, in your like when you while you're in college, you it's it's there's um another question related a little bit to what I'm just about to say as well. So roughly there's about 65 um places of the course. Um so it's quite small compared to other courses, but it's really good for that to be able to make friends, you have a little bit more of a sense of community, and then through the electives you meet people in other courses still within the college. So it's another way to just have that where you make a few more friends, um, and then the people that I met in my in my elective. I still talk to you now and I'm in my final year um, and oftentimes there's different projects um, I know a lot of the people that did the film electives um, in psychology sometimes they still work as as extras in the background of the film stuff that, they, that they're um, doing for their projects in the course so it, it's a really interesting way and if you have any type of different interests it's a really good way to explore a little bit more about that and then apply your psychology to that and then you can use that a little bit within your own course as well. Yeah, that's great. I think um, one of the things that stands out to visitors that come to IADT is the very visible sense of community um, just between staff and students. Um, and the the size of the college really facilitates that. But also we, we do put a lot of work into that um, so that everyone has a really kind of positive experience on campus. Um, so the yeah the small class sizes or smaller class sizes um, are really helpful for that, and that's something you should consider too when you're choosing a course. Is you know do you do, what kind of institution or what size of institution would would suit you? You know that is something to consider. Um, big institutions don't suit everybody. You know. I might just pop in and answer. There's a question here about how it's decided uh, to offer a PLC student a place. So points are calculated. So anyone doing a PLC can get a maximum of 390 points. Now that doesn't mean that they'll never meet the, the 418 or the 415 or whatever it is. It's separate. It's a separate round in the CAO. So a maximum of 390 points can be achieved by any student doing a PLC. There is actually a calculator on careers portal as well. Um, so you can just, it says, you know, it'll have eight courses and you can say merit distinction and it'll calculate your points for you. So maximum of 319 and uh, based on, you know, how many people apply, the points are calculated and then uh, offers are made to however many people, depending on how many places that are available to be offered. So uh, as you know, it's kind of a lottery system in the sense that there might be a certain number of people who apply, who meet the points requirements, and let's say the points are 375. Now that's literally picking a number out of nowhere, but let's say there are 375 and 15 offers are being made. Um, that's just potentially the first 15 people who have met the points requirements. So it's, it's all done through the CAO system and that's how the offers are made. Um, and they would be set aside, they would be a separate round to the CAO. The points are slightly different, as I said, because it's maximum of 390. So that's how they would be offered. And they would be offered through a separate round that would happen uh, in advance of the leaving cert. If that makes sense. I also see um, another question there just about accommodation. Um, so at the minute there isn't um, IDT um, on campus accommodation, but there's a lot of um, student accommodation available around the Dunleary area. So I know there's like quite a bit in Dean's Grange or what a lot of students will do is that they might find um, housemates and rent a house independently um, through themselves um, or they would avail of digs. There's a really great page run by the IADT Students Union 
um, just called IEBT um, Accommodation on Facebook, or you can get in contact with um, Orla in the reception office and she can send you on to that, or the student union themselves. They're very active on Instagram. I think it's just IEBT SU, um, and they can add you onto that page. And that's really good to help people find digs, which is just renting a room in a family home um, that you would stay kind of on like a, a week to week basis. They might not be for the full seven days. It could just be for the, um, the week while you're in college and then you go home on the weekend if you live just down the country or something like that. That's really good to know. Yeah. And the Students' Union is, is quite active, aren't they, really on campus? Like they do a lot of um, support with students and um, they, they got an award, I think it was last year, for um, some of the disability support work they were doing, which is fantastic. Yeah. They, they have, um, there's lots of opportunity as well to get involved with the different projects they run. So they had a campaign for um, students with disabilities that ended up winning um, a national award um, regarding destigmatizing disabilities. Um, they also run like events every week and they help aid in the clubs and societies. So it's a really active, like fun community as well to be able to have a bit of like a a life outside of college that's still your your social life. I see a question there about um, a focus on individual versus group group projects. So I might just talk about it a little bit and then hand over to um, my colleagues here. They can tell you from the, the student graduate perspective, but um, we have a mixture. So you will do some um, assessments on an individual basis and then you will do other assessments on a small group basis. Um, so there, there is a mixture. Um, the small group assessments could be a group presentation or a group seminar or a group project or something like that. The individual assessments could be like an in-class multiple choice test or it could be an essay or something like that. So there's a big variety. Um, where we have, well, all CA, CA work is, is very, you know, much supported by uh, lectures and, and the other resources that are available to you. But um, when we have students doing group work, uh, there is a lot of support around how to do group work itself. And um, we find then that we we have a smooth running of the group work. Um, but we do place a lot of value on group work because we know it's very advantageous for students to have that experience when they leave college and, and are seeking um, employment. In, in various different sectors. Do, 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 do you want to maybe talk a little bit about your experience of doing different types of individual or group work or is there anything that you stood, you know, did that really stood out to you? I would definitely say that throughout our course, it's very like in thirds. So be one third to be a lot of presentations, then the next third to be group work and then the last third to be individual work. But it's very evenly spread out and it's very well done and it does help you know it helps like with the future jobs and you know learning how to work with other people as well as presenting it's really important really good thanks lauren yeah definitely i think lauren said it said it great there's a really good kind of mix of what you're working on um and whether it's group work or presentations or it could even be sometimes they're a little bit of a mixture of both but there's very few assignments that are the same as something else would be. Um, so it really broadens your skills over lots of different types of assignments and deliverables that you're giving. Yeah, it was the same for me. We did um, a lot of different group work and one that I remember was um, really enjoyable was towards the end, I think maybe third or fourth year, we had positive and transpersonal, I think, psychology. And what we had to do in groups was use uh, different topics. So me and my friend we did uh mindfulness so essentially what we had to do was we had half an hour and we basically essentially taught a class to our classmates so we did uh like coloring in we did some meditation we made these glitter pots we talked all about mindfulness and the importance of mindfulness um and that was something that i wouldn't have even thought about doing in first year but because we had done so much group work and so much kind of collaboration with the students and with our lecturers it, it was something that we were all really comfortable with and everybody came from it came to it with a different perspective so I thought that was really nice and it was it was really fun to be able to just you know spend half an hour doing stuff about mindfulness and the importance of mindfulness and how beneficial it can be especially for 
college students. So, yeah, so you do a lot of, of group assignments alongside, you know, individual stuff. But the collaboration, I think, is very helpful, especially for for topics in psychology. It's nice to speak to other people and to kind of if you don't understand something, it's good to have someone else to look at it um, to, to help you understand. But, yeah, so a lot of group work, but obviously a lot of individual stuff as well. And actually, just uh, very, very recently, just just before um, when was it, October, um, two of our students uh, won the runner up prize at the uh, British Psychological Society conference in Northern Ireland. And uh, they, they won the runner up prize for their presentation that was based on an applied psychology in practice uh, project that they did in third year, which was based on um, how to build connections again um, after COVID. So um, they, they've actually been recognised um, with the prize for that work. And we've had other students um, win prizes and be highly commended. And we've also had students who um, were part of startups in companies in town like Accenture based on uh, work that they did for assessments here as part of their course, which is really exciting. It's great to see them get that recognition. Um, I see a question there. The points are generally a bit lower than other psychology courses in Dublin. What might influence that? I think that's just demand really, isn't it, Robin? It's, it's Yeah, it can kind of depend. I was actually funny yeah. enough, I was just typing the answer, but I, it could also be that some people might not really understand what applied psychology actually is. They might think it, it's not actually psychology, it's something else. But it's, it's it's nearly like psychology turned up because it's the application of psychology principles to practice, which is what people would be doing, uh, you know, in the real world in careers and even things like the graduates of psychology go into such broad career paths because of the application of the psychology principles to practice. So it could be that people don't know what applied psychology entails, um, but it's a it's a level eight Bachelor of Science. It's accredited with the PSI and we have been accredited, you know, multiple times um, consistently. Um, so so it, it's exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's exactly the same as, as going somewhere else now. Um, some colleges might do BA in psychology, but we're we're a Bachelor of Science, so it's considered exactly the same. But it may well be that people don't know what applied psychology is. Like you said, it could be demand um, because of our location. It's not in the city centre, but, you know, everyone who comes and does this course really, really likes it. Um, and obviously, I'm, I'm a graduate from psychology, so I, I really enjoyed it. Um, but I liked the the, app, the kind of practical nature of it because it's not strictly just reading all the time. It's it's applying what you've learned to an experiment. So you're learning about um, facial recognition and memory, and then you're going and you're doing an experiment where you're going and you're asking someone to describe the person that came up to them ten minutes ago to ask them a question. You know what I mean? So it's it's really really practical, and that's something that students, or at least I did, and most other people, found really interesting and very different because we're doing those those practical aspects. Yeah, and I think then when our graduates go out, um, you know, to, to further study or, or to employment in psychology or other areas, because of the um, applied focus in the course, um, they tend to be more confident and they tend to be far more articulate talking about um, what they know in terms of psychology and how they can apply that. So they, re they really have an edge on the other psychology students. I saw a question in the chat there, is the statistics part of the course difficult? Now I could answer that, but I'm gonna hand it over to maybe Sophie and Lauren. Um, how would you answer that to some prospective students? <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't mind answering that. I typed a little message in the chat there, but I think it's good oh, to say it out loud as well. Um, so I'll be honest, I scraped by my Leaving Cert maths and I came straight from my Leaving Cert into the college and I was ordinary level and I was not very good and I did not have any confidence in maths. And when I first started, that was my main, I was terrified to start. But when you get in the lecturers, they teach you the basics from the very beginning, from your first lesson, they'll go through the terminology, everything you need. And it's not like there's anything that you have to learn completely off by heart. That that's never really the case with maths in any sense either. That you always have your, you know, you have your tables, you have everything at your your calculator right at your hand. Um, so they teach you from a basic level and then it will work that way up in from from first to fourth year. So you do have that, um, yeah, and you have lab classes as well. So those are bi-weekly. So every two weeks you have smaller groups of um, 
your lab classes of other students and the lecturers and sometimes there's even um, graduates that come back that can help aid with that and they're able to give you a little bit of extra help um, and just really like push you kind of past that so if you have any questions that's the perfect time to ask there and you have so much opportunity to practice what you're doing and then some of that you even apply into different assignments so you're doing lab reports you have to do a little bit of statistics so you're, you're practicing the whole time so it's never anything too scary and if it is there's loads of help there's lots of lectures that you can go to and um, they run extra classes the odd time i'm attending some of them this year there's a maths tutor that Sinead mentioned earlier so there is a lot of opportunity you're never just left in the left in the dark about it yeah no definitely i it's never the big thing is it's never you against the lecture the lecture is always working with you making sure that you understand everything. Nobody gets left behind. It's very helpful and inclusive. It's great. You never feel stuck in that class. Thank you. Um, any other questions there? Or is there anything that, that you, you folks would like to highlight? Um, there's just one question I see there um, was, do most students find employment after graduating? Um, I'm not sure if I, I, I know I have some friends in the years above that would have graduated, but maybe if someone else wants to chip in as well. So I know I have some friends that went on and they did master's programs abroad. Um, some of them were in clinical psychology. I know other people who did the tech path um, and they have been working on in different startup companies like Accenture, Sinead mentioned, or they've been working. Uh, it's oh like oracle i think it might be mm. called and they're like a viewer startup as well i think they're probably not a startup anymore they're quite an expanded expansive company yeah. but mm. um there's, there's lots of different opportunity and i'm not sure if Sinead or robin maybe yeah. have some mm -hmm. specific sure. stories but yeah i can add to that um our, our graduates have really good success rates like like very very good success rates with finding employment um Look, if you if you want to become like a clinical psychologist or a forensic psychologist or, or you know, uh, uh, work in a very highly specialized area like that, uh, you need to do your PSI accredited degree first, but you will need to do a further study in clinical psychology or forensic psychology, whatever the area is, along with some voluntary work or work placement um, with that. OK. However, uh, and when people um, that have studied our course do that and they follow that path, yes, they, they do very well with getting jobs in those areas. But we have found that a lot of our graduates um, are very successful in getting employment straight after the degree. And this is something that has changed over the last 10 years or so, because, you know, say maybe pre 2010 even, um, it would have been very difficult to get any work um, in psychology with just the undergraduate degree. But now we find that um, our graduates, because uh, they not they don't just know about psychology, they can apply it, that they get lots of jobs in the tech sector. So like Sophie was saying, um, you know, uh, they might get jobs in places like Accenture or Oracle or Google or Facebook. We've also had graduates get um, jobs with the BBC as uh, research assistants. Um, we also have uh, graduates that have gone out and they're working with um, various uh, different organizations that are um, focused on uh, supporting different uh, community groups. And there's, there's just a huge variety. Um, so yeah, they're very successful in getting employment with just the degree, but also when they go on to maybe specialise in a particular area of psychology. Yeah, yeah, it really depends, doesn't it? Because it, it kind of depends on what kind of work you're looking for, because, you know, uh, I went on and I did a master's and uh, quite a lot of my classmates who would have graduated at the same time as me also did master's. But there's a lot of people in HR. HR is one that we get a lot of people going into. Um, I, before I worked in IDT, I worked for a not for profit based in Mountjoy prison, so a prison in Dublin, if you're not from Ireland. And I was working with people coming up to release to get on the housing list, get um medical cards and get welfare appointments. So they're kind of pr immediate primary needs upon release because a lot of the guys that I was working with were uh, kind of long term homeless. So something like that um, lots of not for profit people, people working in the not for profit um, kind of area. 
advocacy things like that so it kind of depends on what you want to do like you said if you if you want to practice uh, be a clinical practitioner or forensic psychologist it, it does take a little bit longer but there are ways that you can do that in a uh, non-practice kind of based way so there's lots of organizations that use forensic psychologists in a private capacity I know when I was in the Netherlands where I did my master's uh, we had um, a module with a guy who had kind of a private forensic investigation kind of organization so they do like blood splatter testing and DNA analysis and that was a private organization he did that privately so there are ways to get into those kind of fields without having to to be practicing clinical psychologist or forensic psychologist so we could talk for hours about the kind of jobs that that people from this from applied psychology take because it's so broad um do most students go abroad to do a master's i can tell you why i went abroad so i actually ended up doing a law master's in forensics criminology and law and I went simply because there was a, a broader variety of masters, but it was also significantly less expensive. Now that's coming from a, a student from the European Union. So if you're an international student, you would be paying international fees. But for me, it was uh, significantly cheaper and just there was a broader variety of what I could study. So it cost me much, much less to, to even the full amount of my fees, my accommodation and living over there was probably cheaper than I would have paid simply for fees in in Ireland. So there is a there is a broader variety of of opportunities, but it kind of depends. Some of my friends uh, who did masters did them here, and um, some of them did. There's masters we have here in IDT. There's a masters in cyber psychology. Students go on and do that, um, but it depends. Like I said, it depends on the masters you want to do. But um, there are lots of opportunities in Ireland and outside of Ireland. So. But having your your PSI accredited degree mm -hmm. is really important mm -hmm. um, to have uh, the maximum kind of amount and, and range of options available to you. Um, so just to answer that question there as well. Um, the the degree because it's a uh, level eight and it's Bachelor of Science and it's PSI accredited. It will be widely recognised outside of Ireland. Absolutely. So the the PSI and the BPS have an understanding that a PSI degree is equivalent to a BPS accredited degree and so on. So, yeah. Are we run, running out of questions? Yeah, I think like we've all been answered there, yeah. yeah. Thank you all so much for your questions. Yeah, very interesting. Just a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Arts in other universities. Um, it's just the the recognition. It's it's the type of degree. I don't think in terms of what you would learn might be that different, but it's really just the recognition and the type of degree um, with the specialization Bachelor of Science rather than Bachelor of Arts, because you could do a degree in English and media and get a Bachelor of Arts. Um, but you couldn't get a Bachelor of Science in English and Media. So it, it is that little bit more specialised. And it does have, like you said, with the, with the statistics and with the scientific aspect, it is a little bit more focused. Now, I can't say for, for any other psychology degrees, but some other psychology degrees might not have as much of a scientific focus or they might not um, do a fully experimental thesis. Um, so some some degrees, they, they don't have to do a thesis, but we have a, an experimental thesis where you would carry out your research, whether that be uh, doing an actual physical experiment or whether that's just answering questionnaires or watching a video online, doing questionnaire before and after. So it, it's more just how, how it's technically recognised, really, and how it's awarded. So, you know, a BA in psychology and a BSc in psychology might not be necessarily too different, but it just kind of separates itself that, that it does have that scientific aspect to it. If anyone else has any other questions, do pop them in. But if you think of something, um, you know, when this is finished and, and, and you want to get that answered, you can email um, my colleague Orla at info at IEDT.ie or you can email myself admissions at IEDT.ie um, and we can give you kind of a, a broader answer. Now, we do have an open day planned in March. Um, so if, if you're in Ireland and, and you do want to come out and you want to meet us, you want to get an idea of the size of the college and the students, 
please do attend. Um, and then obviously, you know, you can have your applied psychology on your CAO before the 1st of February and you can move it around. But yeah, I, I think the open days are lovely because you get to see the space, you get to meet the students and chat to us. And that's something that I think students really appreciate when they come here as full undergraduate students that, you know, I graduated in 2016. And when I got the job here, all of my lecturers said, oh, Robin, you're back. So, you know, that's something that, you know, in other colleges where maybe there might be 500 students in first year, uh, they really do know you and and you chat them in the corridor and you grab a cup of tea. And, and it's something that I felt was really, really positive and really beneficial because it, it does mean that you feel comfortable going to them if, if you're struggling with something. So um, I thought that was something that was really helpful for me anyway. I see a question there. Um, is it a full time course? Yes, it is. It's a full time course over four years. Mm -hmm. And how long do lectures typically last? Lectures are typically uh, around two hours, mm -hmm. but there's um, a little break in between. Um, lectures are not always just your lecturer talking non-stop for two hours um there's lots of different things that happen in a lecture so sometimes your lecture is delivering content in the traditional way but there might also be an activity in the lecture or there might be um, a short video shown in a lecture or there might be a discussion and so on um okay oh somebody asked there what was your favorite part of the course i don't know does anyone want to answer that one. I can go first because I'm finished. Um, I mean, I loved it all, but I really liked uh, forensic psychology was really interesting um, and cyber psychology there. There's not that many, I think, undergraduate degrees that do have those kind of modules, which is something that is is great because they're really they're really fascinating. And and I think all of the, the modules I really enjoyed because they make them, like you said, they make them really interactive. You're not just sitting there listening for two hours and there's always like at least one video or, or something to kind of relate a theory to something that you can kind of understand, which I really liked. But I liked the placement. We did um, an altruism project in third year. So that was a, a volunteering opportunity. So you had a particular number of hours that you had to volunteer. And I always recommend this to students, but if you have an interest, let's say you want to work in the not-for-profit sector, or you want to work with children with autism, or you want to work with children with ADHD, or in a youth club as a career, once you finish your degree, I recommend that students try and get some volunteering during the altruism project in that uh, area because then if you're applying for jobs as a strictly as an applied psychology graduate you can say I did a placement with you know Faroga the youth organization or with as I am or with ADHD Ireland and I ran this youth club or I ran this class or I did this and you've got that experience already so that's something that I found really really helpful um for employment and I thought it was really interesting my myself and a couple of my classmates uh, started a youth club for Faroga uh, in a local area near to me and there wasn't really any youth clubs and we had loads of kids show up so even trying to figure out what keeps 11 and 12 year olds interested and bringing in people to to figure out how that works was was something that I found really interesting so for me it was just kind of the variety of what we learned um I really really liked and I really liked the placement as well I thought that was great thanks Robin what about Lauren and Sophie do you do you have a favorite uh module or you don't have to say my modules just because I'm here by the way. <laughs> I'm quite similar to Robin one of my favorite parts was the altruism project so I volunteer um, with Jigsaw Ireland so that's a youth mental health organization um, and I've been volunteering volunteering there for years and it's really just opened up so many opportunities for me and it's really helped me further my kind of career uh, um, prospects for when I do finish my degree. Um, and I just really enjoyed as well just being um, an advocate for mental health promotion as well. Um, and another part which is a little bit more broad is I really enjoy how with most of the lectures um, across all the modules, um, if you get given an assignment, it's never too strict. It's never write an essay on this one particular thing. It's a, it's a project that you get to bring any kind of particular aspects or particular theories that you really enjoy or you find interesting that it's always a way that you can bring that in so I'm not trying to hype Sinead up but for one of um, her lectures this year um, we had um, 
a seminar that we were able to give and we were able to teach a class and um, me and a friend group that we were able to stand up in front of everyone and teach them and it was about new media and entertainment so we were able to teach a class um, about our theories that we had independently gone and researched on an area that we were interested in which was horror films so that was a really great way to um, to incorporate like our own interests into that and then even as well you can do that with your thesis so you're able to bring your particular interest into that and do a whole massive project on this particular thing you're interested in there's very few times that you're you're forced to study something that you're you're not interested in or have no relation to um it's really able to to bring your own ideas into it um i'm not sure if if anyone else has found the same or if anyone else has anything else to say no, again, for me, obviously the altruism, I'm only doing mine at the minute, but I love it so much. I'm over in the NRH in Dunleary. I'm playing Botcha. I don't know if anybody knows what that is. It's like indoor bowls, but it is genuinely one of the best things I've ever done. It is so much fun. But in college, college, my favourite module would have to be sport and performance. It was something that I never thought you could apply psychology to. So I was so surprised that going in that it even was a thing and then even more surprised at how much I loved it. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So sometimes um, you can be surprised by what by what you find interesting when you learn more about it. That's that's really uh, great insight to get from all of you. Um, I just see a weak question there. What are the timetables usually like? Um, you could say you have a, a heavy week and a light week. So um, in your heavy week, you're going to have lectures and labs. And then on your light week, you're just going to have lectures because the labs run bi weekly, as Sophie was saying earlier. Um, so, uh, like I said, your lectures are usually around the two hour block and your labs could be two to four hours, but there's breaks in between and so on. And we do try to um, construct a timetable um, that takes the the kind of length of the day and lunch breaks and, and all that into account. I think that's um, questions so far, unless there's any more. Yeah, I see one there. It's really about admissions. Do you see that one there, Robin, about? Yeah, so I think yeah. I'll get um, them to email me, but I think what they're asking is about advanced entry potentially, because they may have already done a BA degree. At the minute, advanced entry is not something we can offer for applied psychology because um, that's based on available places. So we can only offer a place for advanced entry into year two or year three or sometimes year four if there is a place to offer and at the minute uh, because it's a very popular course and we tend to keep the students that start in year one all the way up to year four we, we're not offering it this year now if you were applying for a master so if you're applying for the MSc in cyber psychology we would look at your BA um, so if, if it is a, a master's that you're looking to apply for, you can send me an email or if you want me to explain advanced entry, direct entry a little bit more, send me an email. But at the minute, um, we're, we're, we're not able to offer advanced entry. That's not to say in, in two years or three years that we, we won't be able to. We may. But like I said, it, it depends on available places. Um, and at the minute, uh, everyone's here so we, we, we don't have um, any available places um, but yeah send me an email and I can explain it to you a little bit in more detail. Great that's good to know. Um, okay. I might just um, I might just share the slide with the uh, some information about open day and so on and see do we get many more questions Let's see. Um, sorry now. <laughs> now you should be able to see that. OK, so just in terms of next steps, um, as Robin is saying there, you know, if you have any further questions um, that you might think about maybe after, you know, thinking about our session this evening, um, feel free to email, email us at info at IADT.ie. You can also email um, myself directly if you wish at sinead.mead at iadt.ie. Um, check out the course pages on our website if you haven't done that already. There's lots of information about um, the kinds of topics and modules that you will learn about on the course along with um, uh, details about the entry requirements. There's also some um, 
videos of uh, discussions with uh, asked students and, and, and so on about their experiences of the course. Um, you can also ask questions on the live chat on the website as well. We do have an open day coming up on um, 25th of, of March. Have I got that right, Robin? Because the, the little box is covering my slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah. 25th of March. So 20, um, 25th of March, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It would be fantastic if you'd come along and visit us. Um, again, we do a, a similar talk to this, but we um, spent a lot of time talking with uh, visitors on a one to one and small group basis. And um, we do little kind of demonstrations of students work and there will be our fabulous student ambassadors uh, present at open day to talk to you as well and to um, kind of give you that student perspective on what it's like to study applied psychology at IADT. Follow us on social media as well. Keep um, keep up to date with what's going on in IADT. And um, that's a great way to kind of keep in the loop about things like Open Day and also to see what's happening with applied psychology. Oh, email in there as well. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take that slide down now. That's okay. I just so we can see each other again. Any more questions coming in, or are we kind of coming to a conclusion point? I wonder. Yeah, I think it looks like uh, hopefully everyone has. All their questions answered, but this is being recorded as well, and it's going to be posted on the IADT Applied Psychology page, probably in a couple of days. So if you know someone you know wanted to go and they didn't show up or anything like that, this will be on the website, so you can go back and look at it. Um, and like everybody said, we're really contactable, and we we can organise campus tours all the time. Orla does campus tours, and you can literally pop into us anytime we've had people show up and we've introduced them to, to some of the lecturers so you know send us messages follow us on Instagram anything like that and and if something does come up that you're not sure about um email info at idt.ie or myself in admissions and we'll hopefully get anything answered for you um but yeah like I said look pop any questions by email if you don't if you don't think of them now and then this finishes and the second it finishes you think of a question that you forgot to ask that always happens so um yeah Hopefully we got we got some questions answered for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll see you at open day. Um, and pop up to us and, and introduce yourself. Everyone here is super, super friendly. So um, that's what we're here for. So, you know. Brilliant. Thanks, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for um, all of our speakers and thanks to everyone who came to uh, watch the, the spotlight today. Uh, again, yeah, this is all going to be recorded. So if you missed any part of it, maybe you bleeped out in the middle or you missed the beginning, it's all going to be on the website from tomorrow onwards. Thanks, Orla. Thank you Next so much. Place. Thanks right. very much.